Welcome back everyone to the Xamarin Show, Snack Pack Edition. I'm your host James Montemagno and today we're gonna take a look at effects in Xamarin Forms. Effects are super awesome. They're extremely lightweight way of spicing up existing controls or custom controls without any real custom implementation uh, and only takes just a few methods to get access to the native underlying control. I like effects because uh, normally you may think that you have to create all these custom renders to actually get access to the controls, but if effects are a lightweight way of doing um, that without having to implement any of the custom state. In fact, there's only two methods that you have to implement, uh, on attach and on detach to get access to the controls. Additionally, you don't have to subclass controls, so that means that you can just uh, spice up an existing custom control without having to override it at all. And on top of that, you can uh, only implement it on one, two, or any of the platforms that you want. So if you don't add an effect on Android, but implement it on iOS, like we'll do here today, uh, it's good to go, it doesn't matter. You can do it on one, two, or all the controls if you want to. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's hop over to um, Visual Studio for Mac here. I have my weather application. And this is a simple application that goes out. It gets the weather. Here it's very smoky in Seattle, and 74 degrees, quite lovely. Uh, it'll go and get the forecast, the current weather, and what we wanna do is kind of modify the text entry field, the UI text uh, field that's underneath here. And this is just the default control. It has the rounded cr uh, corners. I can zoom in so you can kind of see it. So it would be cool as if we were to change this to maybe a grid, uh, kind of e sharp edges on the side, and maybe even modify what happens when I actually focus this control and modify the background. So here's what we'll do, is we'll come back, we'll stop debugging, and we can see that I just have a standard entry here. So it has a, a binding, it has some data triggers on it to enable it and disable it. And the first thing that we're gonna do is go down into our iOS application. I've created a file, it's blank, it's called entry background effect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement a, uh, a platform effect. There we go. Now the platform effect, so we'll do a quick fix here and implement an abstract class. And what we'll see is that there's those two methods that I mentioned, on attached and on detached. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and first implement this here. And what we'll say is, uh, well, on attached, when it gets loaded, we're going to modify the actual control. So if I say this.control, I have access to the actual UI view that is being displayed. So at this point, I know that it is a UI text field, and it's gonna be the control. And I can say border style and set it equal to, um, let's say, line. So it's a nice line outline. Cool. With that simple control, I'm kind of ready to go in some aspect, but let's do a little bit more. I wanted to say I wanted to get access to the uh, focus property. So I'm gonna create a UI color. Oops, there we go, color. And I'll say background color. And when this gets created, I'll create a background color equal to UI color. And let's set it to like a purple. So I'll do from RGB and I'll say 204, 153, 255, just happen to have that memorized and or written down in front of me. Now what we can do is we have unattached, detached. So how am I gonna get access to the actual change effects uh, when any of the properties change? Well, since it is a platform effect, I can still override a few other properties like two string, but more imp uh, importantly, the on element changed property. So here the on element changed, um, gives me access to some arguments. So I can say if args dot property name equals visual element dot is focused property dot property name. What we can do is we can toggle on and off this background color. So I'll say if control dot background color equals equals background color, let's change it to, uh, let's say back to white. So we'll say uh, control dot background color equals UI color dot white. Uh, else, if it already is white, we'll swap the color here when the focus property is toggled. So control dot background color equals background color. So we're just changing it on and off. Now you can register and do any of the property change events here. But as you can see, it's literally just a few lines of code and I have access to those native underlying controls. Now there's a few things that we need to do uh, to actually get access to this in our XAML. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to export this. So I'm gonna say assembly, export, effect. 
So you may have done export render, export cell previously, but this is an effect. This is an effect here. And what we can see here inside of our helpers is that it's going to take the type that we want and a unique name. The nice thing about effects is that they're stringly typed, which means that they have a unique um, uh, name for each effect and an owner of the effect per assembly. And I'll tell you what that means. So first thing we'll do is a type of, and it's going to be of this. There we go. And then we'll give it a name. So there we go. It's the same name there. Perfect. There we go. So this means that every time that we load this, it'll export uh, this effect with this name. Now on a global level for my application, I've given this uh, resolution group name. And how we do this uh, for effects is it's the resolution group name dot effect. So that way it's unique. So if you want to share this uh, with a community or throughout your company, every assembly will have a different resolution group name assigned to it. So this is just inside the iOS application. So we need to do one more thing to get it into our XAML, which is we need a way of routing it. So if I go back up into my actual shared code here, I have an entry background effect as well. Now, this file has one purpose, and its purpose is to essentially say, whenever I see my weather dot entry background effect, which was my resolution name plus um, actual effect name, give it this class that can be accessed via XAML because XAML needs access to one of these actual effects. So it's really doing nothing. It's just a very lightweight shim um, giving it the specific name. That's a routing effect. So now what we can do now is go back to my actual weather class. And up here, I've gone ahead and exported in my namespace effects. I said, hey, my effects live in my weather dot effects in the my weather assembly. Now what I can do is go into my entry and say entry dot effects. There we go. Now here, it's smart enough to know that effects entry background effect exists as my routing effect. And I just go ahead and attach it. That's it. Now at this point, I'm ready to redeploy my application. And what we'll see is that we'll have the new line outline. And hopefully when I tap on it, it'll change colors as well. So here we go. We have the My Weather that launches up. We have the new line outline. And when I tap on it, it changes to purple. Just like that, I'm getting access to the native controls and access to property change notifications with just a few lines of code, which is really awesome. So no need to subclass it, no need to do custom renders, just a simple effect to spice up an existing control. There you have it. It's just that easy to start using effects in your Xamarin Forms applications. I could go on to implement this in Android or UWP or any other platform that Xamarin Forms supports with just a few lines of code. Hope you enjoyed this uh, short little snack pack on implementing effects in your Xamarin Forms applications. I'll have links to documentation and other great things like attached properties, which are super awesome. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno. This is The Xamarin Show. And please subscribe up over there, over there, wherever it's at on the page. And thanks for watching.